affordable historical fun for all that's what it says on the website here of Highfields Pioneer Village just north of the beautiful town of Toowoomba and it is a Saturday afternoon and I am gonna do a walk and talk and take you through quite a beautiful place over 60 buildings of historic interest now I don't know that I'll be able to share all 60 with you but I'll do my best to share as many as possible and it really is a special place. I was actually looking online for something of interest within a, a short driving distance that I could do and on a, on a Saturday afternoon. And this Pioneer Village looked like just the absolute perfect spot to come along and, uh, and share this with you. So let's go, let's go inside and, and take a look. I think from the, uh, from the way this gentleman is pointing, I think that the uh, the way to go is is just on inside this uh, this drive here. So let's go check this out. I think we're going to see some rather interesting interesting things here at this beautiful spot just north of Toowoomba. Maybe we'll even meet a few interesting people as well. Let's go on inside and check it out. You sure don't have to get very far into the park to see something interesting. Look at this, an early American-made mill, originally on Westbrook Station. So a little bit of uh, a little bit of home for me, if you will, here in the land down under. Look at that, early American-made mill, right there. And this is just just going inside the just going inside the park look how well preserved that is it's actually quite uh, quite old do a nice little walk apart windmills have been in use in Australia since the arrival of the first fleet in 1788 the early systems were used to grind grain the early farmers and graziers and even town dwellers where there was no Reticulated water supply relied on windmills to lift water from the ground. So look at that. Isn't that something? All right. I haven't seen a wood one before. I've seen no shortage of of metal wood mills as I've been walking around uh, this part of Queensland. But this is the first wooden one that I've seen. All right. Let's continue on inside. And just across from the American wooden mill, here is, well, I don't know what this is, but it's awfully big. Look at that. Something, something was uh, inside that. Oh, wow. Looks like a big, uh, big wheel of, of some sort, I'm sure. Well, this is the tanning vats from New Wave. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at what's called a tanning, a tanning vat, and I'll be honest with you that I, I'm not quite sure exactly what a tanning vat is, but I'm sure with a few keystrokes in uh, in Google, you wouldn't be hard pressed to find out what uh, what a tanning vat is. But look at that big gear on the on the side. They have quite a few interesting things here for sure. Just a lot of history here at this beautiful spot just north of Toowoomba. So let's uh, let's continue on. I think the next uh, next thing of interest is going to be really uh, really something special to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be the uh, that would be the big cow, and I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily expecting this uh, this big cow to move back at me, but uh, regardless, this is uh, the big cow was built in the 1970s to attract tourists to a working dairy farm at 911 Archer Road. It's one of the many Australian big things. It was sculptured by Hugh Anderson, who also sculptured the big bulls in Rockhampton. The big cow is seven times the size of an Ashour cow. Wow. 
That's something. It's made of concrete and described as able to withstand a cyclone. After the dairy farm closed, the big cow remained on the property, which was used for a variety of purposes. In March of 2016, the big cow was described as closed and fallen into disrepair. Owners of Maritime Career Training, Barry and Margaret Barnes, donated the big cow to Highlands Pioneer Village in 2019. And on the 10th of January, 2020, the big cow was moved to Highlands thanks to startup finding from <laughs> finding from Clive Berghofer and the generous assistance of Universal Cranes. So look at that. There is your there is your big cow. Isn't that something? Wow. That is really a <laughs> that really is a big cow. No uh no doubt about it. Oh, wow. Made of concrete, nonetheless. Isn't that something? I'll give you a nice uh, close-up of it as I come along. Look at that. Boy, for all of you cow lovers out there, isn't that something? Now, can you imagine, I, I can't personally, but maybe some of you could. Could you imagine having to milk this cow? I mean that in and by itself would be a uh, <laughs> that would be a tourist attraction. You see, that would be the uh, tourist attraction: milking a cow, milking a cow this big. So there's the there is the uh, the back end right there. Next, actually, actually have a ramp that will take you up. I don't know if you can actually go inside of the big cow. Perhaps. Uh, Perhaps you can. Perhaps you can go inside the big cow. But uh, let's go see the rest of the village. Village, uh, villages, village, I think. All right. As you can see, they are open every day from uh, 10 to 4. And just off to the right, you'll have the Bush Ranger Cafe with uh, Ned Kelly up there on the sign. Ned Kelly's a famous, uh, kind of like the Jesse James of uh, Jesse James of Australia. And this would be the Highfield Pioneer Village reception right here. And they actually have a train that goes through here. Today the entry is over at the, actually over at the general store. And look at the sign right here. Welcome to Highfield's Pioneer Village. So they have a sign that's showing you all of the all of the different buildings. You see, isn't that something? Everything from the steam engine shed to the dairy museum, and the auctioneer's hut, the heritage chapel, the village fashion shop, seamstress shop, camera house, butcher shop, blacksmith shop. Boy, they've got it all here. It really, it's a wonderful place. This would be the caretaker's cottage right there. And as I'm walking, you're hearing all of the, I'm assuming and I believe that those are all, those are all magpies making that nice background noise as I walk and talk. This would be the lab hut built in 1860 near Murgon. So a lot of these buildings, most of these buildings, I think they actually brought them here and I'll do my best to share share these with you as I'm able to the history of the Kruja's hut so look at this inside of this building here look at that a drover's blanket you can see oh this is just really wonderful to be able to bring you along and share this with you Wow. Now I don't know how comfortable that would be sleeping on that, but I've slept in some other, I've slept in some crazy places over the years. And look at the floor. The floor is actually, the floor is actually a little bit uneven. You can see that. Look at that. All right, let's, uh, step outside here's your 
pioneer picnic table right there looks like plenty of room here's a nice view of the side of the little hut and here would be your I don't know wishing well maybe your little your little well maybe there's been a wish or two made around this well over the years and over here you'd want to look out for the train this is the rail crossing here get this uh, this train looks like an old old train station it says Gore maybe they brought this from a place called Gore show you the sign right there very nice I'm actually gonna come through here and do a nice do a nice drone flight barbed wire borders and railway lines you can see you gotta watch my watch my step here's a nice couple waiting for the train Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I don't know if this is the the conductor or what have you. Okay. Now somewhere on this property there should be what's called the dunny. <laughs> and that's a word that I just uh, well I became familiar with again recently, the dunny which in America we might call that an actual outhouse. But here you have the Highfields Pioneer Village sign. Really pretty. And just over just over here, look at they have a an emu. They have the emu and the, and the kangaroo with a big old fashioned bicycle right there. And here is the the Rotz Cookhouse, built in 1889. We have the best damper inside. So damper is a damper is a it's a bread and uh, kind of like a biscuit or something. And maybe I'll maybe I'll taste a little little damper before my tour of this place is is finished. But this right here, I would imagine. Look at that, the cookhouse. Isn't that something? All right, and then here we have the bakery. So I'll step inside and give you a nice little, nice little view of the of the bakery. Please enter our bakery to see the wood-fired oven. Look at that. There's your, your wood-fired oven right there. They got quite a bit of information here to operate the baker's oven. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they use all of this. This is all still in use. In fact, look, here's some stuff that they made right here. Look at that. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, no, that's not real. That's just decoration. <laughs> but here's the uh, here would be the old the old cash register. Look at fantastic. Here you have flour for cakes, baker flour for bread and and sugar. And here's uh, Defiant Roller Mills to Woomba. 24 pounds. Very nice. All right, let's go see the, uh, let's go check out the village. And this would be the entry into the village here. There is actually not a whole heck of a lot of people here. And on the outside chance that there's a lovely lady named Oksana 
watching my video. I don't know why, but oftentimes when I see succulents, I often think of the uh, lovely Oksana. But uh, <laughs> there are some beautiful succulents as I find my way into the into the village. And the very first thing that you see coming in is the Morang Morangandan General Store. Phone three, est established 1900. Look at that. And then just over here you have Billy Lid Billy Lid's Manor Cubby House. See where the little kids can come and can come and play. Look at this general store. And then just over here you have the the toy shop. Look, you'd come up here like a like a little kid. Maybe drop drop a little thing off into the into the post office box there. You see? Very nice. And walk up the steps. And here is your here's your general store. Oh, this is really special. No shortage of history here. Look at that scene. Here's an old, looks like a telegraph station. Isn't that something? Look at the switches. Morse code practice set. I'm sure Rob down in Melbourne is really going to appreciate seeing this. All types of little knickknacks up here. Wow. And look at this. Oh, looks like a cash register. And if I turn around here, look at some of this stuff. I'm just going to do a slow pan on this and let you kind of see what's in there. Sloan's liniment in the back. Wow. Isn't that something? Days gone past. For sure. All right, let's go see. Let's go see what's in the. Uh, let's go see what's in the uh, toy shop. Look at Clever Mary bath sink and cleaner. And then we'll poke our head inside the toy shop. I'm not all sure what I'll be able to see in here. Perhaps we'll be able to see some stuff. Toy break. Toy maker brings history to life. Puppets share stories of darling nouns. There's a beautiful little story about perhaps the owner of this. Now, I don't know if I can share what I can share with you in here, but maybe I can. Look at that. Just a collection of various toys that they have here. And then over here, if I can get a hold of a picture, would be a little Pinocchio, if you can actually see it. It's kind of hard with the, with the lighting sometimes to get the best picture. Here's a collection of some other, other toys that you can see here. Looks like a Santa Claus there. Little kangaroo puppet right back there. Wonderful. There's the big bad, big bad wolf. I would imagine. I've been called the big bad wolf before. I think a few times in my life. 
Now look at the view as you come out of the uh, little toy place. Just really, really gorgeous. Just walking around the grounds here, let alone going into the buildings. Just walking through the, the grounds of this beautiful spot is really enjoyable. Look at all these plants. Boy, somebody sure has a, somebody has a green thumb for sure. Look at that. There's your little windmill. No shortage of windmills here. And here is the, uh, what is the Grinky, Grinky Cottage, I believe. I don't know if the, uh, if it's open or not. I guess it is. So this little, little cottage here. I'm actually watching the, as I'm filming this, I'm keeping my eye on the, on the battery. Because I don't want to, don't want to run out of battery. But I also don't want to miss miss anything. This is the Grinke Slab Hut. The Slab Hut was originally built by George Grinke and his brother on their Groomsville property and later relocated. Isn't that something? Look at this hut. If I can step in. Gotta step in and give you a little bit. Let the color adjust. But look at this hut here. There's your dinner table right there. I'm sure that's the dinner, breakfast, and lunch table. Boy, no shortage of history. Over here you've got your, your bed. It's all, it's basically one room. Everything, everything's in here. So there's your bed. There's the little, the little crib for Junior. Here's the nightstand. I don't know if this is, this might actually be, oh, there they are. There's the couple, look at them. And look at that little, little bed right there. And it's warm as I'm filming this. It is, uh, it's a, well, it's a mid-spring day. And it is, uh, boy, it's rather, it's rather warm right now. Here's the view just out the back. You got a scarecrow in the in the garden and come around and I would imagine that this might have been maybe the ice box perhaps that's something there's a little little carriage there what is that all right so let's go Let's go see what else we might uh, might find here. Well, apparently I'm not the only one here today. <laughs> Look who I found. This beautiful little horse here. Just kind of enjoying uh, enjoying the day. Wondering why nobody's going to wondering why nobody's going to feed him. You see, he's coming on over to to say hello. How are you doing, huh? How are you? Yeah, you're looking to see if I've got some food. What a beautiful animal. Little horse. All right. And I found my way over to a corner. It looks like they've got a lot of different exhibits over here, like a, a creamery. You see. The Russell Milker. This is where they'd be milking the milking the cows. 
And just up ahead is a, uh, that says municipal sale yards. So they might have been selling, selling animals over here. Sale days, Tuesdays, pig and calf at 9 a.m. If you want cattle, come on Thursday at noon. Friday, every month, horses at 10 a.m. The auctioneer would be none other than Mr. Barry Getz. So, <laughs> what a wonderful place. I would imagine that schools probably bring their kids here for nice school trips. This is uh, dairy farmers right here. The government wants us oldies to work till we're 75. I'd love to work to 75 if I could remember where I worked. A lot of nostalgia in here related to the dairy, to the dairy industry. All right, let's go see if church is open. There really is no shortage of cute things that you see as you're walking along the various buildings here. Look at this kangaroo here with the seat just underneath this this windmill, one of uh, one of many many windmills. But uh, what caught my attention next is the chapel, and here would be the Heritage Chapel, and you can see there's a a bell right there that they would probably ring, you know, when it was time to come and uh, praise the Lord. So let's go inside and take a look inside the, the Heritage Chapel. Here you go. Now I'm going to take my hat off. And here is the, here's the chapel. Now they start playing music as you come in. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Oh, it's wedding day. There actually, there's a wedding going on. I didn't realize that. Oh my goodness. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Now here would be the bride herself. See, there's the, there's the bride. <laughs> and you know who this guy looks like? This guy. This guy looks like Skip Smith of the Villages. You know, mine is the chest hair, you see? <laughs> that looks just like, oh goodness, he looks just like Skip Smith. I'll be damned, but I don't think Skip's got that much chest hair. <laughs> oh, wonderful. All right. So let's go see what else is in this village. How could I resist this scene as I'm <laughs> heading out of the church? Oh, the creativity that went into putting this beautiful tourist destination together. Look at that. Looks, looks like a little little time out here. <laughs> or maybe it's hide and go seek. I don't know. One thing I've learned about the Aussies is they like their pies. And here you see a, an old truck here that uh, maybe this was the the pie delivery man and maybe whereas in America we had uh, you know the the popsicle man come around you know on uh, summer afternoons maybe back in the day the pie man came along and uh, look at this he's got a uh, got a little stove right in the back of the truck and he'd make his uh, 
he'd make his pie right there and and sell the pie isn't that something so there's your uh, there's your pie truck and I'm just gonna walk through I I don't know how much battery I've got left but I'll do the best here you can see they have a, a boot maker shop there's your old phone booth that's a thing of the past for sure and here would be the the val the the village fashion shop right here if you wanted to get yourself some fashion and I'm tempted to you know I'm tempted to try to walk into all of these places and and share them with you but unfortunately I just don't have the the battery life but here would be your your fashion your fashion shop Boy, my, my hats goes off to the whoever put all of this together. You really did a wonderful job. Very nice. And continuing out. And just around the corner we've got a collection of some rather nice places this is a well this is the button collection look at this here is that's what it says it says button button collection give you a nice close-up view There you have. Very nice. Come on back outside and here you've got some other other buildings here. I'm not quite sure what this building is. You're just gonna have to come and explore a lot of this your, yourself. Here's the Alwyn and Lloyd's camera shop. So there's the camera shop. And then here you got the, here's the butcher shop. No shortage of butcher, butcher shops here. And here you might you get yourself some choice mutton. Look at that. There's your, there's your butcher. No dogs alive, the sign says. I wonder why. As I was walking out, there was a little sign that said the story behind the butcher's apron. And I didn't know that there was a story behind the butcher's apron, but apparently there is. So over here you have the the jail. And it might come as a surprise to some of you, but I've done my time. I'm not going to I'm not going to elaborate on it, but uh I've done my time. Here's your here's your jail. Who who were they? The convicts of Port Arthur. You can see right there. See, if I wanted to be really cruel, I could say, hey, that looks like, no. But I'm not going to do that. So here's your, here's your convict, you see. Here's your convict in his little jail cell here. All right. So they, over here you have a, that's the coach house, which I'll try to take you through the coach house as well. Very nice. This is the Tinsmiths building right here. And I am uh, actually drawing down on the, on the battery, so I'm not gonna be able to share as much of this as I might want to with you. There's Pix Emporium. Let's go look at the Ambulance Museum. 
Little L.A. <laughs> this would be the this would be the ambulance museum, and I actually peeked my head in here just a little bit earlier, and uh, be nice to to share this with you. Share this room now. As soon as I walk in, I think there's going to be a a recording that's going to start. Welcome to the ambulance museum. Yes. So, now look at this ambulance transport right here with the horse. Look at that. If you can, if I can bring it in well enough. Toowoomba's first ambulance, 1902. Gives you some ideas to the history of this place. And that's your ambulance museum. All right, I'm gonna see if I can't find my way over into the into the coach museum before uh, my battery my battery dies out. There's your city of Toowoomba right there. Well, this would be a great spot to wrap up this visit here to the beautiful, beautiful village. And this is the village coach house, the Bob Bone collection. Buggies, carts, and wagonettes, sulkies, and, and harness. And there's a sign on the door. It says Billy T and Damper just off to the left. But as much as I'm able to, I'll share some of this collection with you. Look at some of these belts right here. That would have been on the, on the horses pulling some of these carriages and wagonettes. Here's a horse-drawn wheelchair, which rather fascinating. Look at that. Can you imagine going down the street in one of these and having all the neighbors look at you and say, Honey, did you see Bob's new horse-drawn wheelchair? Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, back in the back in the day, you see the wheels there on the on the front. Wow. Come on, come along through here. Here is your Sunny Queen Egg Farms. Look at that. Farm Fresh Eggs, Bob Bone. There's your low set buggy right there. Look at this. This is the copper mine. Looks like an ambulance wagon from 1900. Oh, those were the days, right? Look at that. This would be the, well, that looks like the drover's wagonette. I think that's a, a funeral. That's for funerals. All right, folks, I really hope you enjoyed this. There is a Yugoslav, Yugoslav cart right there. Very nice. Here's a Bonanza, Bonanza buckboard. And then what do we have here? This would be the Cinderella coach. Well, you gotta, you gotta see the Cinderella coach. Look at this. There's your there's your Cinderella coach right there and I'm assuming that that would be Cinderella right there. I don't think it's Rapunzel. No, that's Cinderella. They wouldn't put Rapunzel outside of a Cinderella coach. Silly me. Wow. And here's your Aussie buckboard right here. Look at that, going out on a Friday night. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, I'm gonna go see if I can't find me some, uh, I'm gonna see if I can't find me some, uh, what is it, Billy T and, Billy T and Damper, <laughs> we'll see. All right, and wrapping this up, this is where one would get uh, cold drinks and Billy tea, <laughs> Billy tea and damper. 
and if I'm not mistaken I think I was told earlier that there's a uh, that there's a stew on that fire right now so this is a uh, this really is a fully operational kitchen you see and they've got a they've got a stew I don't know if they're gonna invite me for invite me for dinner but uh, this is where you would get your this is where you'd get your Billy tea your Billy tea and damper what uh, whatever that is look at this here's your there it is right there Billy tea Billy tea and damper how to make damper here's your recipe six cups of SR flour half a teaspoon of salt three cups of warm water that's it flour salt and warm water mix ingredients together tip on the floured board shape in a damper cook in a warm camp oven or kitchen oven for 30 minutes until brown wrap in a cloth for a few minutes serve with butter and syrup yum so there it is folks there's your visit to this beautiful beautiful spot all right so have a uh, have a great day hope you enjoyed the uh, hope you enjoyed the tour